The Jets offense was pretty basic in their first preseason game, but new offense coordinator Mike LaFour really started to open things up and get more creative in preseason week two against the Packers. We're going to break down three plays here, first of which is the d- double post to Corey Davis that everybody has seen highlights of on third down. Uh, it's a really interesting play. There's a lot to break down here. We're going to go piece by piece and start just by the alignment before the snap. Take a look at the receivers. We have a three by one set. You include the tight end here. We have Jeff Smith up at the top isolated. Jameson Crowder in the slot and Corey Davis here on the boundary in a condensed alignment. Now, this condensed alignment is really important because it's going to give Corey Davis a free release. When receivers are in condensed splits, it's harder for defensive backs to get in position, especially in man coverage, because if a receiver breaks to the inside, there's a lot of trash they have to fight through. If they do a switch release outside, that can cause pick problems. It's a whole bunch of issues. It's better to play off in that position when you're facing receivers in a condensed split. So that's what the corners here are doing. You can see Corey Davis, the man with Corey Davis, is backed off about 9, 10 yards with slight outside leverage. So just off the pre-snap alignment, knowing that this is going to be a post route from Corey Davis, this is a really good alignment. It's giving him a favorable matchup. It's helping him win the route before the play even starts. So just off alignment, we got good stuff going on. Continue on the play here, and we'll see Tyler Croft comes across in motion. And when he does that, The linebacker follows him. That is another indicator for man coverage for Zach Wilson to help ID the defense. This linebacker here, if it was zone, would have likely stayed in his spot and they would have just flipped responsibilities to the other linebacker. But since he followed Croft on the motion, that's an indicator for man. We'll go ahead and look at the rest of the defense to help confirm that as well. Looks like man coverage up the top on Jeff Smith. Man coverage on the running back. We saw the motion to man on the tight end from Croft. Man on Crowder. Man on Corey Davis. Safety is too high. Right now, it's showing too high. The Packers do a lot of too high pre-snap and rotations to single high post-snap, which is what they're going to do here. This is eventually going to be a cover one robber, but it's still man coverage, and that's the important thing. So we have the motion from Tyler Croft to help confirm man coverage. We have the condensed split from Corey Davis to help give him a better release off the line and get a free release. Now we're going to take a look at the route combinations, how they influence each other and help Corey Davis get even more open on this play. So we'll start move the play along here. And start right there where we're going to freeze it. We'll take a look at the routes. We have Jeff Smith is starting a 12 yard comeback up the top here. He's going to be the backside, not going to be too much of an influence in the play. We have Crowder running the first inside post route, and he keeps it a little skinnier, has his defender in man coverage here, drawing attention to the free safety, free safety staying in the middle of the field for right now. Crowder starting to round off to the inside. This defender here had Tyler Croft in man coverage, but since Croft stayed into block, he becomes a hook zone defender. He is also influenced by Crowder getting in the throwing lane of the inside post. Down at the bottom, we have the running back running a flare route, and that is widening this other defender who is in man coverage. But if the running back were to run a little sit route over the middle, this linebacker could hang out in the throwing lane, make it harder to get the pass, maybe jump up and swat it. But the running back is running a flare to the flat, pulling this defender away from the throwing lane, widening the lane for Corey Davis. Finally, we get down to Corey Davis. He is running his post route against an outside leverage corner with man coverage. So Corey Davis does a great job. We'll see here as we back it up. Starts to set up his man outside, gives him a slight nod there, throws him off balance, breaks inside for the post route and looks for the ball. Beautiful design. You can see the flares pulling out to the flat. We have a perfectly clean throwing window here for Zach Wilson on third down. Hook defenders taken by Crowder. Free safety is taken by Crowder. Cornerback here is left on an island against Corey Davis. Corey Davis is going to win that matchup. Corey Davis gets wide open on this post route. So we'll go back, back the play up from the start and see how it goes in real time. There's the motion from Croft to ID man. Zach Wilson knows where he wants to go. Foot in the ground, balls out. Hits Corey Davis in stride, runs into a big play, converts on third and eight, picks up a good game. Now, here's the really important thing that makes this play work. Michael Floor did a great job with his pre-snap alignment as well as his route combinations to set up this third down play and give Corey Davis an opportunity but it's what Zach Wilson does with the ball in his hands that really sets everything apart. Zach Wilson, knowing it's man coverage and knowing he wants Corey Davis on this backside post route is going to hold the free safety with his eyes in the middle of the field. So we'll see from the end zone angle. It's really easy to tell as Wilson starts his drop back, motion Croft over 
There's the drop. You can see as he's going through his drop back, his eyes are deadlocked in the middle of the field. His head doesn't move. Stare down that free safety. Don't give him any indication of where you're going with the ball. Get to the top of the drop and hitch. Still, eyes still in the middle of the field. Not giving that free safety any help. At this point, the free safety has picked up Jamison Crowder on his over because he has no tell from Zach's eyes to know where the ball is going. So he sees the next receiver come into his area. That's where he starts to pick up and bracket the coverage. Wilson continues his drop back, gets to the end. There it is. You see right there's that head turn. Now he looks to the left, checks Corey Davis, immediately starts to throw, hold the free safety out of the way, even widen the throwing lane even more. And then once the throwing motion starts, ball is out quick and it hits Corey Davis in the face mask. You cannot throw it better than that. Perfect location, perfect timing, perfect, perfect rhythm, perfect job by holding of holding the free safety. Everything you could have wanted from Zach Wilson. On this rep, you got to see he did his part. Michael Flora did a lot to give him a favorable opportunity, but Zach Wilson did his part and it paid off big time. All right, next play here. It's the first play of the Jets third drive on offense. It's still their starting offense. We have another three by one set here. Jamison Crowder in the close slot, Corey Davis in the middle slot, and Jeff Smith up at the top to the field side. We have Tyler Croft, the lone tight end here to the left. Tevin Coleman is the running back in the backfield. Now, we saw last play how Michael Floor used motion to identify coverage, help give Zach Wilson a better indicator of what's coming. This is we're going to see how Michael Floor uses motion to influence defenders, get them out of position, and get more favorable matchups to where the play is actually designed. So we're going to start here. Jameson Crowder is going to motion into the backfield and then run what's called an orbit motion out to the back over to the flat. So we'll see here on the play. Fast forward. Crowder comes across in motion winds up in the backfield, and then starts to head back out to the flat as an orbit motion. Now, this is a very, very likely screenplay for a lot of defenses. When they're seeing this orbit motion and the two receivers out here, that very much looks like a screen is coming, and it's supposed to. So if we'll look at the Packers defense here, they're expecting screen. They're expecting the ball to go to Jameson Crowder here on a quick little bubble screen, and that's going to be the play. Slot corner here is not even remotely looking at Corey Davis. His eyes are on Crowder the whole time. He's trying to knife into the backfield and make a play. You have the safety up here. He's looking at the motion. Will linebacker looking at the motion. Free safety looking at the motion. Mike linebacker looking at the motion. Corner looking at the motion. Practically every member of the defense is caught looking at Jamison Crowder when the ball is snapped. And that amount of hesitation, even if it's a half second, gives the offense an advantage because this isn't a screen play. It's a pin and pull run to the front side to the left here. So you're going to watch pin and pull. It's designed to get blockers out to the front. It's designed to be an outside run play that gets to the edge. So if you can pull defenders to the backside with some motion eye candy, it's going to help you out front side by having those defenders be late to, in their pursuit and get to the edge. So we'll start here. Tyler Croft is going to take on the defensive end before double teaming up to the defensive tackle with Mekhi Becton. Becton's going to take on the tackle right away and continue to drive him in. The left guard and center, Jimmy Murray and Connor McGovern, are going to be pulling to the front side. You'll have Murray coming around the edge here and McGovern coming around behind him, getting wider. Right guard Greg Van Roten has a tough reach block on the backside uh, tackle. It's gonna, he's going to end up missing this block. It doesn't quite matter, but that is a tough block to make. That's his assignment. George Van has the backside D end on the end side of the play. So we'll move the play along here. Ball is snapped. Murray and McGovern start their pulls. And you can see Croft takes on the defensive end. Becton takes on the play side tackle. Two guys pulling around. Slot corner has knifed into the backfield because he was thinking screen. He isn't paying attention. If this would have been a play action, potentially, you would have Corey Davis now uncovered on a broken play. Will linebacker still looking at Crowder, not looking at the run action. And you have the rest of the defense now starting to have an idea. But these backside defenders are now going to be late in pursuit. And it was the extra half step of hesitation for the front side defenders. That's going to allow them to get to the edge here. So even though Van Roten misses this reach block, there's enough space to the front side because the front side does such a good job getting the edge that Tevin Coleman can work around this missed block and still get the corner. So we'll move it along here. Van Roten misses the reach. 
Croft has now moved on to the tackle, the double team with Becton, passed off the defensive end to Murray, who picked him up perfectly on time. And we have McGovern coming around behind him to pick up the corner here. Coleman has this lane wide out to the edge. There's nothing stopping him from just widening and continuing to try and get the corner, even though he has this tackle in his face. And that's exactly what Tevin Coleman does here. Slightly wides outside, follows his blocks, lets McGovern pick up the corner, cuts inside, and it's a gain of seven yards. We'll go back and look at it full speed. We got the motion from Crowder into the backfield and then the orbit defense thinks screen pin and pull to the front side. Tevin Coleman cuts inside and gets seven yards. Now that's an important play on first down, especially on your first play of a drive. Getting seven yards on first down is really, really good. That's a great play. That gets you into second and three. You're ahead of the chains. You can call any sort of play you want, whether it be a deep shot off play action, a potential screen pass, anything. Your options are wide open. And if anything doesn't work, third and three is a manageable down. Being able to efficiently run the ball and generate at least four to five yards, if not more per play on first down runs is crucial, especially in this offense. And this is an example of how you can use motion and alignment to help your running game, even apart from schematically. There are things you can do that have nothing to do with where the run is actually going that can help give you an advantage. And that's exactly what happens here. Watch from the end zone angle. Again, we'll see the backside tackle is going to beat Van Roten on this reach block. It is a tough reach block to make, so I'm not holding too much against him for that. It is a very tough block to make for a backside guard. But even though he misses this block, The motion did such a good job front side. We'll see the front side again is going to get the corner. Kevin Coleman's going to be able to get seven yards. And a lot of that has to do with Michael Flores scheming, knowing where defenders are going to be and knowing how he can influence them with motion and with things to throw them off their game. Seven yards on first down is a great play. There's nothing more you can ask for that. Great job by Michael Flores getting his guys an advantage. All right, last play we're going to talk about here. This is the first drive of the second half. This is now the Jets' second team offense, not the first team offense here. And this play is actually going to result in a sack, and it's not going to be the best play in terms of results, but we're going to talk about the schematics and the route combinations and how in the regular season when starters are playing, when hopefully the offensive line can block a little bit better, this is a really good play call by Michael Ford. I wanted to highlight that. So let's start with the set here. Another three by one set. We have the tight end here, Dan Brown in line, Braxton Berrios in the slot, Keewan Cole up at the top out wide. And we have Vincent Smith down here on the backside in a condensed alignment as well. It's going to be a play action run. It's going to look like a power run from shotgun. So you're going to have the guard pull here and you're going to have the line think power. And in reality, it's going to be a play action pass. We're going to have Vincent Smith. It's going to run a deep dig route. You're going to have Dan Brown, who eventually is going to motion over here. We'll move that on. You'll see Dan Brown comes across in motion. That resets the fit for the defense. Now, once he's in motion, he is going to run an over route in front of these linebackers. And up at the top, you have a pew combination, which is post wheel. You're going to have a post from Keelan Cole up here. And Braxton Berrios is going to run an out and up around the boundary on the sideline there. So we're going to see. This play does a really good job of getting its players open. In fact, the first read on the play is going to be Dan Brown on this over, and he is going to get wide open. Unfortunately, the backup right guard, Corey Levin, gets beat, and it doesn't give Mike White enough time to make the throw. In actuality, Mike White may have had a little more time to make the throw, but he did get pressured, and it made things a little difficult. So we'll watch play action here. Dan Brown comes across on the over route, sneaks in front of the linebackers there, and he's clear right at this moment. Mike White's still going through his drop, but he's already past the linebacker. We'll continue on here. Mike White now gets to the top of his drop, back foot in the ground. Dan Brown's wide open. He's got a yard and a half of separation on this linebacker who is in no man's land trying to play catch up. Dan Brown is wide open here. This should be where the ball goes. Mike White goes to throw. You can see he's starting his throwing motion, but he sees the right guard get beat and he sees he has pressure coming. So he gets gun shy he holds the ball and ends up taking a sack. So let's just look here. We have Dan Brown is wide open on this over route. This was a second and six. This would have been a first down. If the offensive line can give protection or Mike White can get the ball out faster and not get pressured so much by immediately by the pressure, then maybe this could have been a first down. This is wide open. You can't scheme up a player really more open than that on most plays. He completely beats both of these linebackers. They get completely caught by the play action fake. Dan Brown gets wide open on the deep over. Would be an easy first down. Now, here's the important thing. 
We talked earlier about how the Packers like showing too high pre-snap and rolling down a single high post-snap. And they do that here again. If you want to back things up, you can see we have a too high defense, even though this safety is manned up on Braxton Berrios. It's showing a too high shell, even though it's going to rotate to one high. They've been playing a lot of one high all day. And Mike LaFleur knew that. We'll see as the play continues on. Mike LaFleur had a touchdown on this play call that if the offensive line blocks would have been wide open, apart from Dan Brown, who is wide open on this over route. Once Dan Brown starts on this over route, the free safety here sees, well, those linebackers didn't pick him up. And this is man coverage up at the top. So no one is going to cover Dan Brown on this over, and he is going to walk uncontested into the end zone if I, the free safety, don't get over in pursuit and try and get him to before he can get into the end zone. So the free safety is starting to bracket this over route, even though it's wide open and the free safety is about 15 yards away from it. And this is still by no means a covered receiver. The free safety is starting to move on to Dan Brown, to eventually pick him up. And what that does is it's going to free Keelan Cole on this post route. So let's progress the play further again, ignore here, ignore the offensive line. Let's look at the route combinations. Let's look at what was there to be had if the offensive line can do their job. And hopefully in the future, when starters are playing and Zach Wilson is a quarterback and not Mike White, the ball gets out quicker, more decisive, or more confident to hang in the pocket or evade the pressure and wait for the route to develop. So Dan Brown comes across, free safety still trying to pick him up. Keelan Cole has his man beat on his inside release. He's going to nod to the inside on the post right there this is a touchdown this is a touchdown free safety as soon as keelan cole crosses his face tries to come back and get back in the play but there would be no shot this is a walk-in touchdown at the front of the goal line for keelan cole if protection holds up could have even had vincent smith on this dig he's got about a yard of separation as well who knows maybe he turns up and breaks a tackle that could have been a touchdown you still have dan brown wide open on the over route even more so than he was about a half second ago there are three open options on this play. It's second and six. It was a play action trying. It's an aggressive play call. It was not, let's not run the ball. Let's not try and get third and short. They were trying to pick up the first down on second and six. The offensive line didn't hold, but Mike LaFleur gave Mike White three open receivers to pick from if the offensive line was there. Now imagine when Zach Wilson is the quarterback and the starting offensive line is there, and these receivers are going to be not even second string receivers that are this open. Imagine what the offense is going to look like. I really want to highlight this play because I don't think many people are going to recognize it because it was a sack and they're not going to pay attention to what happened behind it. But this was a great scheme by Michael Floor. It was a great route distribution. You had multiple receivers open for possible touchdowns on the same play. And even though it was a too high defense pre-snap, LaFleur knew they had been rotating the single high for most of the game. So he knew this over and post combination would put the free safety in a bind. And he got Keelan Cole wide open for a touchdown at the front pylon. Again, offensive line didn't quite do their job, but in the future, hopefully they will. And we will start to see plays like this pay off in dividends. Michael Flores has done an excellent job of scheming his players open, giving players favorable advantages, identifying coverage with motion checks, allowing routes to influence each other to create throwing lanes. Everything that you would want to see from an offensive coordinator, Michael Flores has shown in this game. There was a lot to like. I was really impressed by what I saw. And even though this play was a sack, again, you got three wide open receivers. You cannot ask for better than that in the NFL. When coverage is tough, when the windows are tighter, when everything is more difficult and everybody is a professional, you cannot ask for anything better than three wide open targets on a pass play. Michael Floor certainly knows what he's doing, and I'm excited to see how this continues into the regular season. 